Uh, Javier Gomez, thanks for joining us, Javier. Um, have you ever heard had a puppy that his health stays a little bit, little bit tilt on the same side? He can move around with that pain. I think we're talking about a dog that is got its head tilt, probably. So, head head tilts on dogs um, can be a number of different things. It can be neurological. Um, those things in puppies can go away just with time. Uh, they can be in older dogs, and even with puppies, it can be an ear infection too. So. Go ch check the ears, make sure the ears are clean. If you get a Q-tip in there and it comes up with any muck, then you've got to identify whether that is mites, which you'd use a product like Mitoban, or is it yeast or, or, or something else. So head tilt, sometimes it's that. I've seen head tilts in puppies that have completely gone away by the time they're eight, eight weeks old. Okay, it says uh, we know that head tilts are common in Frenchy puppies. And that they outgrow them. Come on here, though. If it's not an ear infection. Here we go. So uh, somebody said that they uh, recently heard that vitamin E and. Can you just pin your legs a little bit? What is. Ooh. Ooh. There we go. There we go. Uh, vitamin E and. We'll correct. Vitamin this. E and selenium. Uh, um, I don't know about that. I mean, you know, if it's, if you know, you know, most of these things that people start saying there are deficiency in vitamins, I doubt it. I mean, depending on what you're feeding, but, you know, you're going to have to go Google that. Um, you know, yeah, the, 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 the problem with this is if I don't know, then I can't tell you whether or not that's a, that's a sensible solution. Um, but I can tell you this. The first thing would be to check for physically foreign bodies in the ear, mites, yeast, Dirty ears start yeah. there first. Usually, it's it makes sure you know could be ear infection for sure. That's that's a cause of an ear tilt, right? Or a puppy going in a little circle or flopping over to one side, and it could be an ear infection. Yes. Um, all right. So um, my doodle pup has joined us. Thank you very much. Um, what do you use to deworm your pregnant female as a preventative? Good question. So, Bender Benderzol Safeguard, we always, well, I say always, we just started doing this in the last year and a half. We deworm mum 10 days before whelp, approximately, for three days. So it's day 10, day 9, day 8. She gets whatever her body weight is, she gets one milliliter per every five pounds of body weight. So a 20 pound dog will get four mils, three days in a row. Bender Benderzol, goat wormer, safeguard, all the same thing. Panicure, all the same thing. And then go ahead and treat her at the other side of whelp, day seven, eight, nine. Again, three days in a row with the uh, safeguard again. Mm -hmm. And that just, it's a general, very, very safe dewormer. And remember, we're deworming puppies here. I mean, they're almost ready to come out of mum. There's a difference between deworming when a dog has got worms when it's just been, you know, four days into a pregnancy, because you're talking about all kinds of things going on in mum that can really can be affected by um, outside influences. Not so much when puppies are about to be born. So, you know, I had somebody the other day who sent me a picture. It looked like their dog got flat worms at day 50. And so I said, that's actually the day. And I said, well, what I would do is first off, make sure... If you've got worms present, make sure that you know what kind of worm it is so you can treat it with the right stuff. I'll give you an example of this. Just yesterday, mm -hmm. you showed me some poop. Oh. Right? You showed me some poop. <laughs> I was and I mean, it looked, it looked like a humongous tapeworm or something. Yes. I mean, it was, it was like this long and, 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 and structured to it. Yeah. And I looked and I said, good Lord, let's take a look at that. So I took a look at it. And then after kind of moving around, I got a four kind of moving around. Hot. What it was, was a little bit of her pee pad. The plastic from that, she chewed up, ripped off a, sheet, a strip of it and swallowed it and it came out of poop. So if you've got something that looks like a worm, I would do this. First off, go get yourself a little tea strainer, put the worms in that tea strainer, wash the water on it. So you can get all the feces off it so you can see exactly what you're looking at. Because if it's colored like red or blue or black, it's probably not a worm. It's probably just foreign material. Mm -hmm. And then if you've got a magnifying glass, take a look at it on the magnifying glass and look and see what you've got. And then you can taste it. No, don't do that. <laughs> you can, don't do that. But the point here is it's very easy to think you've got something and you're going to treat it. And in fact, that's not the situation. 
because we don't want to overtreat dogs, especially pregnant ones. Now, look, what do you do if your dog's got tapeworm and it's mm -hmm. only 20 days into the pregnancy? Mm -hmm. Probably going to use, um, I forget what you use for tapeworm, um, Droncet. Droncet, I think, is the, is the preferred drug. But I don't know that Droncet should be used on a pregnant dog. But you've got the problem no, you've got here. probably not. Well, because it's due to fleas. It's... Um, yeah. I don't know the answer to this, but, 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 you know, if you've got a dog that's really getting in trouble because of whatever health situation, it's time to go to a vet and Google it to find out whether or not the treatment that you're thinking about doing is okay for a safe dog. Do you want to get a cord for your phone? No, I can't. Okay. This, this phone here is the one that's going to run out of battery. Mm. Um, <laughs> all right. E. Fizzle, my dog's first heat was at 10 months old. Will her second heat take that long or can I give her something to make it come sooner? So we've had these questions before, but I'm going to answer it quickly here. So, so Demi's going to make you do Yeah, <laughs> I tell James, I said every week, it seems like yeah, we I mean, I, answer the same Well, I'm going to ask a question about that. Yeah. So, so the answer is, is because it took 10 months, no. Most dogs come in every six months and dogs don't start their first heat typically until they're 10 months to a year and a half old. So just because it took a year and a half to come in the first time does not mean it's going to take a year and a half for the next time. It's probably going to be six months. And do not start mucking around with anything to give a dog when it's that young to bring it in. That would be a huge mistake. We would not do that at all. Mm -hmm. not at all. So here's a question for everybody. You know, those of you who are coming in here, and we've got um, 34 people now watching this, and we appreciate that, and we'd really like it if you hit the like button. But the question here is, should we, we can, can continue these on a Sunday at 8 o'clock. Should we make these more specific about the questions we're going to answer, i.e., should we have one that's on nutrition? Should we have one that's just on health? Should we have one that's just to do with selling puppies? Should we have one that's just to do raising puppies? Or so, breedings. Or breedings or matings mm -hmm. or the pregnancy. So mm -hmm. the point here is, is to narrow this down. <laughs> Bathing puppies. Yes, to narrow it down. So, so what I'm asking is, why don't you give us uh, topics that you think would make sense as a general topic you'd be interested in, and then Tammy and I will have a bash at that. And if you give us it beforehand, if we don't quite up to speed on it, well, we can do our homework, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Tammy can do her homework. Mm. Yeah, James um, needs to be doing his so YouTube account, we're talking about this puppy's got the head tilt and asking about Suralan to treat ear infection on an eight-week-old puppy. Well, we're back to this. What is the problem? What is the cause of the problem? If this is an ear infection, there's like lots of different things. It could be bacterial ear infection. It could be ear mites. It could be yeast. You need to find out what it is first, if you possibly can, before you start giving yeah, a, a specific you drug. Need to, yeah, right. have the vet. Check yeah. it. And I don't know what Suralan is, but even if I did, I'd say uh, the first thing I'd ask is what are you trying to treat. Mm -hmm. Right. And if you can, maybe your vet can meet you outside with that puppy if it hadn't had its shots yet and meet you in your car with that puppy. To so check its ears. Oops, oh, sorry. So here's a good one. Uh, this is from Urancet. I'm going to slaughter your name. Urizanet Mendez, and uh, I think this is the first time you've joined us, so we, uh, we love having you here. Thank you for joining us. Did an AI on February the 27th, uh, would the fetus still look small and be hard to see on her 33rd day on an ultrasound? So that's a great question. Of course, the size of the fetus does depend a little bit on the breed. If it's a Chihuahua, it's obviously going to be smaller than it would be if it's a Great Dane or a Great Pyrenees. But... Basically, by the time you are at 33 days in, you should be able to see it on ultrasound. It's going to be bigger than a walnut at that point. You should be able to palpitate it if you know what you're looking for. You should be able to squish along the, the puppy's, be the, the, the mama's belly and feel it. You should be able to see it on ultrasound and you should be able to relax and pregnancy test and it should show up on that. X-ray is no good because the bones are not calcified yet, and it won't show up on an X-ray. So an X-ray is no good at this point. X-ray is good at about 50 days or later. Uh, they say ultrasounds are like 22 days, but my experience with ultrasounds has not been very good. Uh, we don't get ultrasounds. Uh, and the reason is, is there's too many false positives, false negatives. They, they see poop in there, and they say it's a puppy. Uh, or, or they say that it's a puppy and it's poop. So... Now, the relax, the relax, and the thing, the great thing about an ultrasound is when you do an ultrasound, it does tell you how many puppies hopefully are present. 
The problem is I see so many times when people report back they've got four puppies and the dog's not even pregnant. The relaxing pregnancy test, I don't do those until you're at day 30 or later, and they, for us, have been very, very reliable. I've never seen a false positive. I have seen false negatives because they were done too early. Even the faintest line on the relaxing pregnancy test, by the way, is you have to pull blood, you have to spin it down, you put a couple of drops onto a cassette, you wait five minutes, and it gives you one line to say the test is good and two lines if the dog is pregnant. Cody sells those at my breeder supply. They're not very expensive. I think it's like 72 bucks for five tests, so $12 a test, $13 a test. Swear bum. So you don't have to take your dog to the vet. You can do it all yourself. So I, I like that as a solution. And you now the other part about this is what are you trying to get done here? I mean, do you need to know how many puppies are present? Maybe because you've got people waiting for puppies, you'd like to give a result to that. Um, mm -hmm. For it, us. Just being excited, period. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Well, so... For us, I mean, we're pretty good at guessing the number of puppies in a dog. So a dog that's pregnant and is, you know, a few days away from whelp, we can normally get it right to within a puppy. You know, I say, oh, there's five puppies in there and there's six. And there's five puppies and I got it right. You looking at me like that's not true? No, yeah. I'm, I'm having problems okay, here. Okay, are you? Okay. Mm -hmm. um. <laughs> Uh, my doodle pup. My doodle pup, you're going to have to subscribe to us on this one. So my mother says, you know you have a healthy marriage when you're showing each other interesting dog poo samples. If they only knew. If they only knew. <laughs> yes. Um, well, that's, hey, I mean, I, I, you know, it sounds kind of gross. I think dog poo is kind of interesting myself. There's lots of different kinds of dog poo, and uh, I don't like particularly cleaning it up, but we do... Oh, um, yeah. Very rare occasion does James clean it up. Oh, that's not true at all. Um, but, I mean, it's a good first sign of what your dog's doing. Is your nose growing? <laughs> so it's a good way of giving an idea. I mean, if you've got a dog that's a happy dog that wants to go play around, it's got clear eyes and pink gums, and it's poop, poop would, would uh, you know, you can pick it up without it getting more smushy. You've got a dog that's probably in good shape. And my vet always said, don't worry about it. I give probiotics. We sell those on my breeder supply too. Good. And uh, sometimes your food has it in it, but it's always good for an extra boost. Yeah, uh, to me, the jury's out a little Just, bit on this. You know, so it kind of helps the gut. We, 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 we do gut. use it. And um, look, it's one of those things that I don't think could do any harm. I mean, maybe if it's like a totally unreputable brand, but it may have junk in it that's not what it says it is, which I think, you know, because we've had things like food scares from mm -hmm. food that's produced in China. I don't want to get into some kind of a bashing other people, but, but the point here is, you know, it's a little debatable as to how useful it is. But if you've got a dog that's having some problems, then I'd say, hey, give it a shot, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Same thing about things like... And if it doesn't correct itself within a couple of days, um, I would get you a little baggie and a little plastic spoon and scoop some of that poop up and put it in the baggie, put the name of your dog, your name, your phone number, and take it down to your vet and say, hey, can you run this under your microscope and tell me what I've got here, you know, and tell them kind of what the problem is and then go on. And then they'll call you later and, and let you know. Uh, our vets do that for us, you know, if we need to and, and, uh, that way you can not have to pay a vet bill of, you know, 50 to $75 just for a vet visit. This will save right. you some money. And I mean, the other thing that, that, that we do, if we've got a dog, that, unless it's a pregnant dog, but if you've got a dog that's having some poop problems, the first thing we do, if we haven't wormed it in a month, we'll give it three days of, mm -hmm. uh, of uh, safeguard. Very, very safe. It's a good knockdown mm -hmm. thing. And it's, you know. And this didn't just puppies. This is yeah. your dogs, yeah. your adult dogs too. Yeah, puppies. Puppies don't get safeguard until they're six weeks old. They get panicure. They get uh, parental pair mate or Nemex when they're, you know, sub over two weeks and less than six weeks old. And Dana Hall, I spoke to Dana Hall yesterday. Nice girl. So Dana Hall said, I did not start folic acid yet. My girls are at day 20 and 27 post AI. Is it okay to start now? It's like quitting smoking. It's never too late. Never too late. I think that the best effect of folic acid are probably in the first 30 days and not the last 30 days of pregnancy. Is that when late's okay? What do you mean? You mean pretty funny? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. 
not quite sure what you mean. James all the time gets on to me for being. <laughs> oh right. yes, I was like you were telling me. That's when light's acid. okay. Yeah, um, you know, look, if you don't give folic acid, what's the chances that you're going to have birth defects? Three percent more. I don't know. Five percent more. I mean, it's one of those things that's like it can't hurt if you give enough. It's a good thing. We do and then when you don't, you've got a puppy with a cleft yeah, palate or something. You're going to blame yourself. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. Right. Exactly. So yeah. look, it's never too late. And I mean, you know, even if it's a week to go, hey, why not do it? It can't hurt, right? But certainly, you'd like to do this at the moment that you AI. It would be the right time to start if you possibly can. Brifford Great Danes bred my female. Hey, subscribe to us, Brifford Great. And all of those people who haven't given us a thumbs up, give us a thumbs up. We appreciate that. We're not just just Frenchy people, people only. It's all canines. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we've had yeah. all kinds of dogs, and we'll try to answer them. You yeah. know, we know more about Frenchies because we've been doing it for twenty two years. Used to do Labradors for eight years. We had a German Shepherd. We have a pap had a Papillon. Had a Jitsu. Shih Tzu, had a uh, poodles, what, had poodles, yeah. had um, um, what was your mom's dog? Oh yeah, a Yorkshire Terrier and, and would, uh, Pomeranian and uh, oh the big big dog, no, the Mountain the, Burmese dog, Mountain Burmese she had. and oh King Charles, yeah King Charles. So I love we the come King from Charles. a family of all we, kinds we, of dogs. We love dogs. We love dogs. <laughs> and I mean, look, all the questions we've taken today and all the ones we've answered, hopefully correctly, they, they pertain to any dogs. They're not yeah. just Frenchy answers. And then right? my son's got the hunting dogs. And, and so, so Brifford yeah. Great Danes here, I'm assuming that you raise Great Danes. Great. Um, yeah. So what can I say about Great Danes? I mean, first thing is get a saddle and have a shovel for the poop. Oh, it's like one, a cow. One, one of our, uh, Lee, Lee, who works for us still, mm -hmm. He had Great Danes. Mm -hmm. Yes, his Great Danes, I think they had two, and unfortunately at about nine years old, mm -hmm. they got in trouble and didn't make it. They were just the, well, it's a big dog. That's yes. a big breed. They yes, well, I mean, I think that things like you know bones and long. joints are problems in those yeah. dogs. Anyway, you asked a question. She bled through the whole seat cycle, natural cover, tied three times. Is she pregnant? Well, the first thing is that the discharge that she produces has got zero to do with whether she was bred or pregnant. Unless it's a discharge because she's got an infection like pyometra or vaginitis. So, is she pregnant? Don't know. You know all the, I'd give you a better answer on this if you told me what the days were that you bred her and what the, specifically if you knew what the progesterone levels were on those days. If you bred her and one of those days was around a 15 and you bred her three times two days apart, you're a really good chance that she's, she's pregnant. But unfortunately, the blood discharge color is not helping us because most dogs would have gone clear or vanilla at the point that you're, you're breeding. So we don't know the answer on that, but hopefully she is, but there's no guarantees. <laughs> e. Fissel says, I love everything you do. Can you go twice a week, please? No. <laughs> no, we, we'd lose all of our customers, or except for one, you. Uh, Did you hear what Luna Kelly said about her dog? No. It says LOL, one of my dogs spin around while she's while she poops like a salad shooter. <laughs> ah, not as easy to pick up. She's special. Yeah. I think she's pretty special if she can do that. She's so there's trick an interesting dog. thing. You see a lot of dogs that do turn around before they sit down yeah. before they bed, don't yeah. you? Yeah. They do a turn or two before they sit down. I presume yeah. that's an evolutionary thing when they're checking their surroundings for uh yeah. Animals that can Mem eat them. Remember when our lab puppies would go out to go use the bathroom? And two. their their little Tail. tails would crook like, like a number, number two. two. Yeah. And I go, Oh look, James, they're gonna do, do, do a number, number two. two. And James goes, Oh, you're full of it. And he yeah. looked and yeah. sure enough. <laughs> Cross town Frenchies says says more specific. Okay, I'm not sure what we're being more specific about. I'm going back here to see. I don't see a previous question. So um Tell us what you want to be more specific about, and we will try. Strength Camp Bull says, I like the separate topics They have uh, than, than have a random night for questions. I think so, too. I mean, I would really like to, to, to try to do one where we're going to do a, you know, if, so if people ask us some questions afterwards through YouTube or whatever comments, then we'll have a, and we'll announce that before it happens. So that uh, if you're interested, you can tune in. And then if we don't get enough questions, we'll make it random. But I would like to try to stay to a particular like Part of the problem with this is, is that we tend to answer the same questions repeatedly. And yeah. that's okay, but I'm worried about people who are watching this 
saying, oh, I've already heard this yeah. crap before, and then, and they sign up. Because the whole watch. point of this, of course, is, yeah. is, is to get subscribers, right? We want people, if we're just talking to one person, Tammy is talking to me and I'm talking to her, as much as we like doing that, <laughs> right? So probably not a really, okay. Okay, somebody's wanting to know, do you prefer to breed a fluffy to a fluffy or a fluffy to a fluffy carrier? Well, it's your choice. If you want six puppies that are full of fluffies, you know, or if you want half and half to satisfy both who wants fluffy and who doesn't want fluffy, you know, and so I, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna answer the question a little bit different mm -hmm. than you are. By the way, crosstown French is more specific. This is more specific on topics. Thank you very much for clarifying that. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, so I'm so one of the questions might be. Is there a chance of having problems when you have fluffies? So if you breed a fluffy to a fluffy to get all fluffies, are you likely to have more issues with allergies, yeah. structure? Right. I think the answer is no. Nothing. I don't if, know where if you got you, structure at. If you look at when we first had fluffies around, which was really it was going strong about, what, four or five years ago, there yeah, were some, and still fluffy. a little bit, not so good-looking fluffies because everybody was trying to produce a fluffy, and so... You know, some of the structures were a little bit... Almost 10 years now. Has it been? Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so from that point of view, I think today, you know, to me, I try to produce a fluffy because a fluffy is a more valuable dog than a non-fluffy. Mm -hmm. But you... Oh, they're so cute. I like them. I love them. But the thing, if you've got the um, no, um, no shed gene, fluffy carriers are fantastic. They're, they're, uh, their coat's thicker. And they don't shed like your standard French bulldogs. Uh, they'll shed a little tiny bit, but nothing like your standards. And it makes it really nice. Um, and then your full fluffies are great too, because they're just yes. so cute. So you you like breed a, a teddy bear, a fluffy carrier, to a fluffy carrier. What do you get? A fluffy carrier. Well, you'll get a quarter. Full, of fluffies. full fluffies, half fluffy carriers, mm -hmm. and a quarter no fluffy whatsoever. Mm -hmm. But a fluffy mm -hmm. to a fluffy, fluffies all the time. Fluffy to and a fluffy carrier, a, 50, yeah, 50, right. yeah. Yep. If you breed a full fluffy to a fluffy carrier, you'll get like mom and dad, half full fluffy and half fluffy carriers, which is a great combination too. Yeah. I think, you know, and I mean, I got people. Well, that's who's... where I'm saying you'll satisfy both worlds. Yeah, well, who I've wants got... fluffy and who doesn't? I've got people. And who's... if people say I don't want any kind of fluffy. Like, okay, well, this doesn't show it on the outside, just has it on the inside. And if you don't breed to a yeah. fluffy carrier, you're just going to get little fluffy carriers again, and you don't have to worry about the and, and hair. You, you look, but that's an eye appeal thing. And folks. you can't, it's, you can't yeah. make a litter that makes everybody happy. That's just not right. happening, right? It's just not happening. And, and, and so, you know, you've got to decide what your target audience is. Who are the you can't people satisfy that, everybody? So, right. But I mean, you know, it's it's. If you've got a fluffy and you've never had a fluffy litter before, I'd breed back to a fluffy and at least get some fluffies out of it. Yeah. Hey, You'll love it when you do it. My phone may die on us, so we may not make the full hour here. If it does, I'll try and get back on again, but I don't know if it'll let me get back on alive. So I apologize if that happens, but it, there's a possibility in the next 15 minutes this thing could go down, and it's because I... Well, it, oh, you know, it won't go. No, if I, okay. if I plug it in, yeah. it troubles... Okay, so hurry and answer yeah, questions. Okay. Um, so Olivia Robinson says, I love listening to you guys. Well, thank you, Olivia. We appreciate that. Um, Somebody wanted to know if a big rope is a real Frenchie. Can you register them? Do you have some? Okay, good question. So yeah, you, want, you can register them. You want to you tackle that? And they are Frenchie. They are Frenchie. After so many times of being bred and bred and bred, they definitely are a full, you know, are a Frenchie. So, um, yes, we have one. He is done. a full fluffy. Big rope stud. Yes, and what's his name? His Tank? name is Tank. Tank, right? He's pretty thing. Mm -hmm. um, he's just now getting. And he's a Rolls Royce son. Just so now, I mean, he's just about on the just, cusp of, 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 of producing. We always scenery. thought, oh, not big rope. He is so comical looking. It's just he's so precious and he's so loving and he's just cute as he can be. So let's just talk a second it's got about real good, nice open a AKC and these and these dogs. For instance, you know, um, you know, fluffies, morals, big robes, pinks, coys. None of these dogs can be in the show ring. If you've got two dogs that have both got AKC breeding certificates and you breed them together, the entire litter is AKC registrable. You cannot take dogs that aren't standard dogs into the show ring, but you can register them. So then the question gets to be, where do the big ropes come from? Well, there could be all kinds of answers mm -hmm. on this. 
It could be something where you've got, we, we see some of our dogs that have got bigger ropes. And if you, and their structure's getting better and better. Yes. And but, but if this you, guy we is, could have produced our own yeah. set of big ropes by just over the last 10 years, breeding dogs together that had more rope on their nose. Mm -hmm. There's a good chance that it came from, what are the dogs? Well, we've had ropes? a lot of, of, of our dogs that had the natural big ropes. Yeah, right. But that, yeah. yes, but they wouldn't yeah. be called a big rope. But the, no, my no, point they here wouldn't, is, but it's, so, so what is the dog the that thing. what is the dog that maybe that Sharpay? So it's quite possible mm -hmm. that people introduce Sharpays into the lineup. And then there's a whole question about how do they do that. Just remember this. Every single dog that's walking this earth comes back from some common ancestor. And they all had to start somewhere. And all of these breeds happen because people did crossbreeding between breeds. If you you know, let's say you did an outbreeding to a chihuahua, for instance. I mean, we're not going to do this, but if you did an outbreeding to a chihuahua and you kept on doing that, those offspring back and back, and you had enough of them that you didn't kind of, you know, get too many brothers and sisters breeding together, you know, after about eight or 10 breedings, you'd have 100%, you have 99.9% .9 of French bulldogs, and then you wouldn't be able to tell the difference. So people get stuck on this sometimes, mm -hmm. especially the people in the show ring where they think, you know, if it's not a cream dog, a brindle dog, or, or a cabbage tapping on the shot on the mm -hmm. knee, then, you know, it's not a Frenchie. Mm -hmm. It's a Frenchie, folks. Mm -hmm. Anyway, mm -hmm. there we go. And if we're ever saying anything wrong, correct us. And if you know more about it, let us know. This is what this thing is for, this live. Yes. Well, I said that certainly if we had a general conversation, there'd be a lot of people who didn't like what we just said. Well, I think I that most of the people who are watching are probably more in tune with. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Next question. Okay. And well, I'm going to say one last thing about the course. Okay. There's the whole group, Peter, Professional Ethical Treatment of Animals. We believe that we are the professional ethical treatment of animals, that we have nothing to do with Peter. And those people are, in my opinion, nut jobs. So there you go. Okay. okay. Said, uh, do you prefer AI to or a TCI? Okay. So there's four ways you can breed a dog. You can do a natural breeding. We don't do that mm -hmm. because it's hard for Frenchies to do it. And introducing dogs together that you don't know anything about could have brucellosis and you can have all kinds of sexually transmitted diseases like canine herpes virus as well. So we don't do that. The second one is, is, is that you do a vaginal AI with an AI rod. You manually insert the rod of the female. And that's what we do almost exclusively. And that works well. And I recommend you do at least two of those a few days apart. Then you and can you do, have videos on that too. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Then you can yeah. do what's called a transcervical insemination, which is where you have a, a, what's, it's called a TCI gun. And I have one. It's basically a gun that has a long stainless steel tube and there's a light and a camera on the end and a hollow tube that passes down through it. You can stick that through the dog's vulva and you can then visualize what's going on and get to the right place, put the tube in there, and then with a syringe, put the semen right where you'd like it. Um, I've not had a lot of success with that, and but there are a lot of people who do that. And then, of course, the last one is surgical. And are you tapping my leg to stop? No, okay. no. The last one is surgical where you put the dog to sleep for five minutes, shave its belly, make an incision, pull the uterine horns out, put the sperm directly in there. Not a fan of this. I am a fan of this if you've got semen that's shown up late and you've got to breed late in the cycle. I am, if you're going to do frozen semen, you have to do this because a frozen semen does not stay li alive long enough. But I don't generally like the idea of doing what I consider to be somewhat unnecessary surgery on dog with the possibilities of uh, getting infection and the much higher price yeah. so yes and remember we sell the ai tubes and the brucellosis testing pregnancy testing on our website www.mybreedersupply.com check that out there's a lot of neat things to buy on there and if they're on there all those supplies that are on their products we have used them and if we didn't like it we do not sell them right so check yeah, it french out. My 10 day old Frenchies are not pooping with that enema. So, when we do an enema, what we typically do is take warm water with a couple of drops of dishwashing soap and about a cup of warm water, mm -hmm. use a syringe, blow it up their butts gently. That works really well. They can get used to this. And if you're continually giving enemas, like you've been doing it for like eight days, you can have a dog that, and humans too, where they don't poop without help. And if mum's not stimulating them, which is what you mentioned here, mm -hmm. I would do the Tammy trick, and that is to go get some peanut, peanut butter. butter. Put it on their bottom, the Smear puppy's bottom. bottom, and mama dog will lick that off because. Yep. Now, I don't know how long my battery's going to last for, but hopefully we'll finish the whole thing off in another 10 minutes. Yeah. We'll give you the two minutes that we missed. 
So somebody tell me whether the microphone's working. It should be much better. We'll move this back. We'll make it a bit noisy while I do this. Can I move your legs for a second? Uh-oh. Yeah, you don't care about that. Move your legs for a second. You move your legs for a second. My battery's going to work. There you go. There we go. Okay. Boy. Okay. Sound should be better. Technical difficulties. At least we didn't have costume malfunctions. You remember that when that happened to Janet Jackson? Okay. Can hear you. Sound is good. All right. Good. We can finish this off on a high note. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Okay. Yes, um, yeah, remember our phone numbers are on that website of mybreedersupply.com. There's like, a, um, there's two phone numbers for sure. Cody's phone number and the uh, My Breeder Supply phone number. And if there's not an answer, please leave a message. Also send a text because we get so many spam calls with this that if you don't leave a message or and send a text, uh, you're not going to get that call back. So uh, be sure and do both. Leave your phone number George, George, and send a text. George Rodriguez, what is your experience with the intensity gene? Does it express with one copy or does it need two copies to express? So the intensity gene makes white brighter, makes creams oh, brighter, makes so tan, tan points brighter. I think that it does express with a single copy because it's like cream. Just a single copy of cream does help tan points too. So... I think it certainly expresses better with two. I think it does express with one, but I don't know that I don't know that that's true. I mean, I'll give you an example: the pied gene. We always say you have to have two copies of a pied gene for a dog to be pied. That is true. However, a dog that it's a carrier of pied almost always has white on its chest. So there's an example of a of a recessive gene pied that does have some influence with a single copy produced a white chest. Not always, but Pretty much always, if you see a dog that's got a pretty good white patch on its chest, 90% of the time it carries, one of the parents is, is yeah. pied or carries pied. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But that double intensity is really pretty. Uh, Childress J52, can you share your knowledge and thoughts on the koi DNA with French's, please? I don't know anything about this. Tell me, do you, no. know, what do you know about dog and, and anybody that does know it, hey, let us know and we'll discuss it on the. Uh, on the YouTube live. So I'd say this is, would be a good one for a topic that would be talk about, you I know, think they're beautiful. Talk about koi's, huskies, My pinks, goes right to it. pinks, big ropes. Mm -hmm. um, you know, maybe you will have a whole thing just talking about this. I've got to get up to speed yeah. though. Yes, yeah. right. We'll blame that one on James. Mr. Clean says, thank you for the shipmaker tone. Well, great. Well, thank you for getting the shipmate tone. So the yeah. shipmate is a double walled insulated vacuum flask that has a computer in the lid and you put a battery in it and it will keep semen at exactly five degrees centigrade for many days and so for shipments especially the problem with all these passive systems is they don't get cold enough and then if you have a shipment that lasts more than a day they get they run out of cold and they don't work oh and you can even track it too no no, you can't track it? You can track the temperature. Yeah, track the temperature. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought you meant track the temperature. You were talking shipment. about keeping it cold. And I yeah, said, yeah, it keeps a log every minute. It, it lets you know every minute. when the temperature yes. went up and when the temperature yeah. went down. Yes, right. Yes. Um. Oh. Uh, Fred T. Yeah. He you, said he was going to call Cody tomorrow. You made me happy. Good. Yeah, good. Fred T., I really appreciate you guys. We appreciate you too, Fred. Um, I'm thinking about putting my female back into heat. She's had puppies four months ago. Is it safe? No, don't do it. No, no, just wait. Just wait. Yeah, well, if she had puppies four months ago, mm. then that means she had two months of being pregnant, and then four months ago, she's right on the cusp of going back into heat now. So if the question is, is it okay to breed back to back? Yes, provided the last heat, uh, the last litter, C-section. C-section, whatever. She bounced back. She had fun with the puppies. Well, you enjoyed the whole process. Ask your vet, how does she look on the inside? You yes. Know, tell thing. him to be sure and check. If you can't go in there when she's having her babies with the vet, then make sure you tell the vet, well, I want to know what she looks like on the inside. Does you she always look good? Around. Yeah. I mean, yeah. we like to be there so we can physically yes. look. And then if we see some We scarring. get to go in there and do the shaking of the puppies and right. loving on them. Yeah, Rubbing I mean, and them. also, you know, getting our ideas about how to do some of this, yeah. not for the vet. And know, we always double check. Now, what, what, Did you check for cleft palates? One, because we always check for mm. cleft palates, right? There. One of the things I don't like that I see a lot of vets do is they clamp off umbilical oh. cords, then they cut and give the puppy to one of the techs mm. or the us. 
I don't like clams. I, think I can't it, shake a puppy real good with that clam I think there you're because it's in the for, way. You're asking it's for an umbilical hernia. It's pulling on the, yeah, yeah it's pulling on the little cord yeah. and you get an umbilical hernia. Yeah, and then, you know, it may not show up for a bit, but you did some yeah. damage to that area. So mm -hmm. I, I'm just not a fan of, uh, so I'd much rather they, they tie it off with some, with mm -hmm. the, the stitch, not stitch, yeah, but with some. a little uh, string. But yeah, right, exactly. I mean. Whatever they use. Yeah, cat yeah, gut or whatever yeah, you want to call yeah, it, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, can an English bulldog give, give birth past 63 days? Absolutely, any dog can. So here's the typical reason why you go past, there's, a, there's three reasons that you can go past 63 days, and they're common. The most likely one is you bred early, you didn't realize it, and because of that, because it's nothing to do with the date you bred, it's to do with when the eggs are ready to be fertilized, and it's typically 61 days, if, plus or minus a day from that point. So if you breed early, you think you got it right. The result of this is, is the, the whelp comes late and the litter tends to be small. Smaller puppies don't give, or small litters, a singleton puppy, don't give good signals to mum with progesterone levels to say, hey, I'm ready to come out of here. I want out in the, in the real world. Consequently, those puppies can go late for the, that reason as well. Um, and then, of course, the third one is that some dogs just have, you know, gestation periods that are a bit longer and it's just the way they are so i mean i think about the time that we had problems with premature puppies mm -hmm. we were day 67 mm. and i didn't have a progesterone machine back then and i was just like crap oh i'm getting really worried about these puppies mm. there's three puppies in there it wasn't a really small litter but it wasn't a big litter and it was 67 days past that and uh you know i went to the vet and i said you know i just i hate waiting any longer on this her temperature has got close to 99.0 went to the vet and the vet said well she doesn't have any milk yet you know, you're taking a risk here, and I'm like, well, lots of dogs don't have milk for them before they have a C-section. Let's go ahead and do it. We did it. Have a chill. And we lost, I think we lost one of those three, and it was a battle for the other two. We, they survived it. My mistake, and that was day 67. So it should have been like day 69 in that dog. And what happened? We bred early. We probably bred four or five days early. So our 61 days or 63 from ovulation, all of a sudden is 68 days. There you go. So absolutely, um, you know, I'm a firm believer that you need to look at all the signs. Temperatures drop below 99.0. Dogs not eating any food. Um, doing some nesting and panting. Uh, may have early stages of labor. Dilated cervix, progesterone level of certainly less than 3.5. If, if you do most of that stuff, you won't get in trouble. If you ignore all that stuff and just summarily think, hey, it's been too long, you can get in trouble. And lots of vets will absolutely push you in that direction too. So be very careful on this. I, I, I talk to a lot of people who have made this mistake and they've made this mistake under the guidance of a vet. Okay, did you answer this one, Rachel Brooks, about her stud when they pulled from him, had blood in the semen, and then they pulled again five days later? Did you talk about that? No, I didn't, but we will right now. Yeah. Yes. Uh, where is that question? It's right up here. See, Rachel Brooks. Rachel Brooks, Rachel Brooks, Rachel Brooks. Oh, no. Uh, I just Sorry. read it all to you. Oh, thank you for your advice. Okay, I, I helped somebody on this. So they called me. Okay. Yeah, they called yeah. me. They had some blood. So this is another thing. You've got a dog that has kind of some blood in its semen. That semen looks kind of when red. When you're pulling pink. from your stud. Yeah, right. So what's the cause of this? The most likely cause of this is the dog hasn't been used much. It just needs to be basically flushed out. So what I said to this person, to Rachel, was pull again in another few days. Specifically, if you don't need to use them yet, pull them again and use them more frequently than what you're doing. It'll probably clear it up. And it did. So there could be other problems. I mean, you could have some kind of bacterial infection, but I've never seen, I've seen blood and semen. I had one dog solo who tended to have pink semen. He got dogs bred without any trouble at all. Never had a problem with it. The semen looked quite unremarkable under a microscope, completely normal. And uh, he just put a bit of blood in it and it just took one drop mm -hmm. to make it look pretty pink. So I wouldn't get too worried about this. Now, You've got a dog that's the semen's completely clear and you don't see any swimmers and that's a different story that's that's you know so so the thing here is if you you should have a microscope if you're in the stud business i think if you're going to be breeding dogs to any degree it makes sense to have a microscope and i would go buy a uh oh, what's the brand that we were celestron with a digital screen that's going to cost you 400 dollars up to 800 bucks 400x magnification is plenty a color one's what you want. You need to get that. Then you can look at semen. And if the semen's all swimming around, probably fine. 
someone's asking if Phoebe and Mando litter. Uh, yes, I do have one boy left, full fluffy, lilac and tan, uh, ATAT. Um, I think he carries a copy of Pod and no Brindle. So there's one boy left, and uh, it's Shelly who you would call. So give me a call at 580-799-1910. And my son Cody has full fluffies and fluffy carriers, boys and girls. So call me at 580-799-1910 or Cody's phone number, 806-664-0173. So I just saw the come up on the screen. Do you have any pie French? There's nothing for sale. Oh, we do yeah, have pie French. Yeah, he does. Oh, he does? Oh, yeah, he's got, oh. he's got, he's got, uh, oh. as in puppy? Yes. Okay, yeah, he's got two of them, a boy and a girl. Cutest things you ever seen. I saw those the other day, and they're just precious, beautifully marked. Uh, call Cody at 806-664-0173. That is 806-664-0173. Oh one seven three. So a little boy and little girl pod. We're going to lose our battery here in a yeah, moment. So yeah. when it dumps, that's going to be the end of this. But we're going to keep on going. So Melissa Carver, I have a stunning friend who tends to bounce progesterone numbers up and down. We've failed with two breedings. Do you have any advice on catching her ovulation? It is extremely hard. And he's sending you then go and say we we haven't. Um, and you've been doing breeding Frenchies for eight years, so you obviously experienced this. So this is what I'd say. Some dogs have got some underlying problems. They're not going to get pregnant. And the, and the first place to start is where they have a blood panel done. And look for specifically things like thyroid levels that are hypothyroid. And you can give medications for that if that's the case. So that's the first place to start. The second thing is you can have things like cysts on, 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 on the uterus that can produce funny progesterone levels bouncing around. The dog is not even in heat. Check for that with an ultrasound. The third thing is, is there's no point breeding a dog unless progesterone levels have gone up on an Ibex above a 15 and on a fine care above a 17 and on a Minivitis above a 28. So if you're not seeing those numbers go up and they never go up, then there's probably an underlying problem with this dog. Now, I did have one dog that we could never get pregnant. I actually inherited her from somebody else who couldn't get pregnant. We didn't either. We didn't know what we were doing. We didn't have a progesterone machine back then. So the answer is, is that, you know, it's, it's, it can be tough on this. And I mean, I think that the, probably the best tool that you can have is to have a progesterone machine. So Cody does have those on my breeder supply. Mm -hmm. You can invest 2,800 bucks. The fine care machine's wonderful. We have also the oxygen, oxygen yes. machine too. Yes, but the, but the fine care machine has been, it, it's really helped us get good litters. I mean, mm -hmm. these, somebody asked what's this, you know, they made a question about what's, what's litter size for us. An average litter size these days is five to six puppies. I and mean, we routinely get eights, sometimes get tens, and we just don't get ones or twos. So, and why is that? Because we're clever? No. It's because we've got a progesterone machine. It's simple okay. as that. Okay. Doodle, uh, my doodle pup wants to know, what do you mean by shaking a puppy? Oh. <laughs> when they're born. Uh, and uh, Shaking beats, down a puppy. Yeah. Yeah. Beats by jerk answered her question. Uh, when they pull the pups out, some... People swing the pup between uh, I do their legs to get the fluid out of their lungs. So the secret to it this helps is clear that fluid out comes out of their nose, out of their mouth. Yes, yeah, you know, so, and so you're let's talk about that. that. Then we also use the little sucker. Little, yes, yeah. This is a puppy. That's the puppy's head. The puppy goes in your hand with your head fingers because, around the puppy's head, yes. so the puppy does not fly out. Right. You then make right. sure there's nothing and then around you. Cup you. It like this. Yes. Other hand here. You no, make no, sure your that your hands are bigger. Like, you, you make like sure this. yes the puppy's heads they're protected trapped. right here yes with my you look fingers. around to make sure there's nobody yeah. you're going to bash the puppy's head off the table you don't do it real hard but you do it a little from up, from up here a snap a, a solid yeah. far swing down and then, right <laughs> i mean it works well yeah yeah and then from our puppy care kit if you order that uh we've got the little uh, syringe thing what is that the little uh, suction tube ball. suction ball yeah 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 suction ball and we Suck that out of their nose Absolutely. too. That's what she, and their mouth. Too. I meant by shaking a puppy. I don't yeah. mean like shaking it for <laughs> make its brain loose. Yeah, yeah. Come with his um, last yeah, yeah. It's been great thus far. Okay. Um. Uh, did you happen to come to Texas recently? I heard you were maybe coming to Showtime Reproductive Center. No, I don't know Showtime Reproductive Center. 
uh, they were, they were, that's where you take off heels. I don't know about them, but are they good? Because other people need to know about good, good vets. The vets that I know that people in Texas tend to go to if they're around the Dallas Fort Worth area is Duran Animal Hospital in the south part of uh, Oklahoma on I 35. Mm -hmm. They come highly, Dr. Mills comes highly recommended. I've not met him, but I know that he is, does a lot of these and he's, probably one of the least expensive people in the state. I think he'll do a C-section for you for like 500 bucks. And not that cheap's good, it's that he's good. Not, not the, you know, the combination of cheap and good is a great combination, right? Cheap and no good, we don't want any part of that. And I don't like super expensive either. I mean, you know, if you're in New York and you do an emergency C-section, it costs you $6,000, bloody hell. What do they want to do, get a car? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Oh, it's in Denton, Texas. Okay, Rachel wrote, yes. It's Melissa Carver, um, what's your name by uh, eight years? Oh, that's the, that's the one that's up here. Oh, right okay, that, okay, okay. Yep. What age yep. can you feed probiotics to puppies? Um, I would labels. say, yeah, read the label, but I know that I have probably given them a probiotic at six weeks, seven weeks. When they're being weaned and they're onto regular food. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, I wouldn't give mm -hmm. that to a puppy that's, Yeah. I wouldn't give it to I a puppy mean, that's nursing. Yeah, yeah, right. but you it, probiotics pretty safe uh you can give it to them every day if you wanted to you know once they're older as well um okay oh good lord extraordinary beautiful journey they stole four french bulldogs from a home in dover delaware a day ago six suspects with ak-47 good land can you discuss precautions on how you take mm. to protect your dogs from this happening please thank you i always say think of the what ifs uh, when you get that phone call, they want to meet you somewhere, they want to come to your house, you just say, nope, I'll meet you. You know, hopefully you've done enough visiting with these people, too, that you kind of have an idea how everything is. Um, so I'm, I'm going to just show you a couple of things here. The first thing is what leads up to this is the conversation that you have with somebody that is just not normal. They don't care about price. They don't want to discuss price. They're not discussing much about the dog at all. They just want to know if they can get a dog. That is not a normal conversation for us. Scams start with things like, oh, I'm going to have somebody come beat the dogs up. They're going to bring a, a certified check for extra money. So can you give that person some couple hundred bucks so they can get some food and some gas? <laughs> no, we're not doing that. Yeah. So any, Don't so, ever let them come to your house. So I think the best thing that you can do is say, oh, yeah, I've got your puppies. And if you're uncertain about this, I would simply say, yes, I'll meet you at the police station. I'll bring the puppies. I'll meet you at the police station. Because people can go to the police station with AK-47s. There's going to be a gun battle, and they're going to get shot. <laughs> you well, I think if you call the police station, too, or walk in a, an hour or so before you actually meet these people and go to the – front there and talk to somebody there and say, I felt uncomfortable from the get-go, so just FYI. So they just said something there. They think they were left in a covered patio and the people probably hopped the fence and stole them probably. Yes. Well, I mean, you know, you've got problems. I mean, you know, mm. for our dogs, our dogs do go outside in, in a secure area uh, without us for a little bit. But I mean, you know, uh, we've got a number of entry points we've got to get through. Um, I think that generally that what you should have is at least two Two entry points that somebody or a dog's got to get through to escape or somebody's got to get in to get them. But I mean, you know, there's a certain amount of this. If somebody wants to do a home invasion on you, what can you do? You know, they've already planned this and you don't know it's going to happen. You know, you know, does it make sense to shoot somebody over them stealing a dog? Not in my opinion. And I don't think that you should get into a gun battle with somebody either. But, um, you know, each of their own on that. I, I, there's certain things that you can't protect yourself against. I think that if you start giving your phone number out and you're on Facebook or TikTok and you start talking about these beautiful puppies and what the value they are and you're showing pictures of you driving around in a Lamborghini and these kind of things, I think that's probably a mistake. You know, you're making yourself a target. People who are going to do these things aren't going to come and steal a mutt. They're going to come and steal a 10, 20, 30, 40, $70,000 dog. And if you've got dogs like that, then I mean, you better have some kind of security. I think it makes sense. One of the things that would make sense is always to have some kind of cameras? security system. Yes. You got to have cameras. They don't stop you it from happening. You need to have cameras. Yeah. Yeah. But they do two things. The first thing is if you run into these situations, you can you go can review buy cheap it. cameras too. Yeah. You can buy a camera for 30 bucks. Well, I can yeah. 30 bucks. Perfect good enough. The, the, the point here is, is that you can review the camera footage and you might be able to tell who these people are, what car they're in, and help the police try mm -hmm. to track them down. Mm -hmm. The second thing is, 
you want to make those things, some of the cameras visible so that people who are coming by realize, here's one of the things that we have. We have a sign on our door that says, uh, 